This is our planet, the one place we all call home. And this is part six, our fresh water. Without fresh water, life on earth wouldn't exist. Every animal and plant that lives on land depends upon it, including humans. Fresh water is the most precious resource on our planet, but we must allow it to flow freely. In this picture, we can see pelicans on Lake Brewster in Australia. All about our fresh water. Despite its life-giving importance, fresh water adds up to less than 3% of the total water on Earth. The rest is salt water in the seas and oceans. What's more, almost all our fresh water is locked up in ice caps or glaciers, although some of this is released as meltwater when the ice retreats every spring. Even more fresh water is buried deep underground. In fact, at any one time, only a tiny fraction of the total water on Earth runs through rivers and streams, ponds, lakes and wetlands. Even so, it's this flow of fresh water that's essential to the health of the freshwater environment and everything that relies upon it. Fresh water is the key to life on our planet and essential to human beings. We drink it to stay alive and use it to stay clean and to water our crops. We also use it to produce electricity through hydropower and for cooling in thermal power stations. Nature relies on fresh water too. Freshwater habitats are home to more than 10% of all the world's known animals, from dragonflies and kingfishers to ospreys and bears. Almost half of all known fish species exist in fresh waterways. Some, such as salmon and catfish, rely on the flow of fresh water to travel vast distances to complete their life cycles. Fresh water also helps to control the temperature of the land and sea, and even acts like a huge conveyor belt, transporting nutrients that make soil fertile. Special quality. In fresh waters, it's all about flow. The free movement of water in rivers, streams, and wetlands is vital for wildlife when it comes to feeding, breeding, and migration. In this picture, we can see black bears, bald eagles, and thousands of salmon as they thrive in their freshwater habitat. Stories from our freshwater, roaming the riverbank. When rain falls over the plains of Brazil, it creates the largest tropical wetland on Earth, the Pantanal, and draws all manner of animals to the riverbanks. A jaguar prowls towards a pair of capybara, standing in the shallows. Capybara are the largest living rodents in the world. The jaguar may be a top predator, but the capybara are more nimble once they flee into the water, and this time the chance of a meal is lost. The jaguar slinks on. Perhaps it's time to try a different prey. The caiman is like an alligator, but with longer teeth. It's basking in the shallows below the bank, unaware of the approaching jaguar. Tackling one of these would be risky, but this jaguar has a technique. Splash! The jaguar takes the caiman by surprise by leaping from above. Immediately, the caiman rolls to try to drown it. Predator and prey seem evenly matched, but the jaguar hangs on until finally he wins the battle. Moments like these take place across the wetlands of the Pantanal. This is nature as it should be. Whatever the story, water is at the heart of it. In the top picture here we can see a jaguar as it stalks the capybara. In the bottom one we can see a jaguar as it's stalking the caiman. Drought drama. In some parts of Tanzania, East Africa, the water flow for many rivers has been diverted for farming. This means that during droughts, the great waterways shrink to isolated pools, and this affects the wildlife. Hippopotamuses depend on free-flowing water to keep cool during the day. Now, they're forced to wallow in mud. As the water level falls still further, 
the hippos find themselves crammed together, and that is when tempers begin to fray. Buffaloes are forced to the same small drinking spots as the lions that prey upon them. As the drought continues, the buffaloes begin to weaken, and the odds change in the lions' favour. The hardships of the dry season have always been part of life on East Africa's plains. But as the planet warms, and we take so much water for our own needs, the droughts are becoming more frequent and severe. Mayfly Mayhem Female mayflies can't waste time after mating. At dusk on the tributaries of Europe's River Danube, female mayflies swarm into the air. Then the race is on to fly upstream and lay their eggs before they die from exhaustion just a few hours later. Paddle Power The rivers of the Andes in South America run fast and strong. For those that can cope with the currents and the chilly waters, there is food, mainly insects and their love, to be plucked from just below the surface. Torrent ducks, strong swimmers and plucky divers able to pick what little food there is from the riverbank are designed for the job. Shell show. Competition among the cichlid fish is intense in the crowded waters of Africa's Lake Tanganyika. To attract the attention of a female, a male Calypteris cichlid collects shells. He isn't just trying to impress her, however. The female cichlid is so tiny she can slip inside a shell to lay her eggs. Once the eggs are fertilized by the male, she will guard them for up to a fortnight before they hatch. Drought diggers in Tanzania, in the same drought-hitting drinking spots used by hippos and buffaloes, elephants reach their river and find it has run dry. They use their trunks to dig holes where the water once flowed. Their extraordinary sense of smell helps them to locate where water lies closest to the surface. In severe droughts, the wells they dig can be their lifeline. Super users. Humans use over 10 billion tons of fresh water daily. We transport water from wherever it should be to where, wherever we want it. We've turned torrents into trickles and the repercussions are devastating. Rivers dry out, fish stocks plummet, crops fail, and drinking water disappears. Protecting our fresh water. It's all about flow. In our need for fresh water, we are constantly disrupting its natural flow. This provides us with water on tap, but can cause problems for wildlife. Water for all. We need to rethink how we capture, divert and store fresh water, whether it's to supply towns and cities, industry or farms, so that we are working with nature. Ditch the dam. We don't have to keep building dams. It's now cheaper to use renewable energy sources such as wind and solar than to build mega hydroelectric projects. Turn to technology. The technology already exists that provides us with enough water while allowing the natural flow to continue. And that is the end of part six, Our Fresh Water. From our planet, the one place we all call home.